What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, so we're getting ready to tackle one of the more difficult units that we do. Not saying it is difficult, but um, sometimes people have a little issue with it. So I want to make sure you follow along really good, take some good notes, ask questions when you need to ask questions. Here we go. So what we're talking about is we're talking about how we're going to use the mole ratios in balanced chemical equations. And so if you talk to anybody who's ever taken my chemistry class before, if you hear this word right here, stoichiometry, and that's how it's pronounced, stoichiometry, uh, they might slide into cold sweats and have night terrors and all kinds of stuff like that. The, most of the people have a tough time with stoichiometry. Um, but I'm hoping that we're going to fix that this year. We're going to fix that this year. So anyways, stoichiometry is part of chemistry that studies amounts of substances that are involved in reactions. So we're going to be calculating amounts of substances. So like if I go into a chemistry lab and I know that you know, magnesium and hydrochloric acid will react, I might need to know how much of each one. So how do I figure that out? Well, before we even start that, let's talk about this. It's all about recipes, okay? So the stoichiometry is no more difficult than anything I'm getting ready to say right now. It's about recipes. So if I give you a recipe for 20 chocolate chip cookies, and I need three cups of flour, one cup of sugar, two cups of chocolate chips, I don't even know if that's a legit um, uh, uh, recipe or not. Y'all try it out and tell me what happens. Um, but anyways, let's just say for instance that that's what we got. And let's, um, let's say we could write a chemical formula for that, right? And the chemical formula would look like this. Three flour, one sugar. Notice there's no number right here because there's an understood one, right? So that means that's an understood one sugar. Two cups of chocolate chips is going to give us 20 chocolate chip cookies, okay? And from that, we can use all kinds of, um, let me move my, we can uh, use all kinds of, um, of ratios, right? So what, I mean, what would I need if I doubled the flour, if I had six cups of flour? What would I need if I only had half as much chocolate chips as I needed? You know, how would I adjust the recipe if the amounts were different? And so just as an example of several different ratios I've put up here, um, here are one, two, three, four, five different ratios, right? And I used it from this recipe. That's where I came up with those ratios. Um, three cups of flour to one cup of sugar. That's one possible ratio. Um, three cups of flour to two cups of chips, right? That's a possible ratio. And I got it from the equation that I put. Three cups flour to two cook, 20 cookies, right? And that's a possible ratio that I could use. One cup of sugar to two cups of chips, 20 cookies to one cup of sugar. And that's not all of the possible ratios, but that's one, two, three, four, five possible ratios that I could get from this um, equation right here. And so it's as simple as that. So like if I doubled the amount of flour, if I had six cups of flour instead of three, how many cookies could I make? 40, right? I could make 40 cookies if I doubled the recipe. If I doubled the recipe, then I could make 40. How about this? What if I only had one cup of chocolate chips? How many cookies could I make? 10 chocolate chip cookies because I have half as much of the chocolate chip so I can make half as much chocolate chip cookies. Um, and we would just have to adjust these as we needed to, right? We would just have to adjust these as we needed to. We would cut both of these in half. So it's as simple as that. So if that, what I just talked about made sense, then the rest of the stuff shouldn't be that big a deal. Let's go. All right, and there's supposed to be an arrow there. I don't know what happened to my arrow, but anyways. So the mole ratio is the ratio of reactants and products. Let me move my camera again. Uh, the mole ratio is the ratio of reactants and products, and it's the ratio of coefficients for reactants and products found in a balanced chemical reaction. That's a lot of fancy words to say what I just finished saying about the... Um, so these are like recipes, right? This one is when I add 2mg plus 
How many O's? One O, and that's supposed to be an arrow. Let me draw an arrow in there because that'll make me feel better. I don't know why my arrow didn't show up, but anyways, um, will give me two uh, magnesium oxide, right? So that's my it, that's my uh, recipe, if you will. Here I've got one nitrogen plus three hydrogen gives me two ammonia. And you didn't need to know that was ammonia, but I'm just telling you. Um, so here it's a two to one ratio for the magnesium and oxygen. It's a two to two ratio for the magnesium and the magnesium oxide. It's a one to two ratio for the oxygen to magnesium oxide. So I can compare any two things I want to and put them in a ratio, you know, set them up like a fraction and set them up as a ratio. Here I've got one nitrogen to three hydrogen. I got one nitrogen to two ammonium. I've got three hydrogen to two ammonium, right? So it's just exactly what we just did. Um, it's just that ratio. So let me give you an example. And again, why in the heck they don't want to put my arrow? But that's all right, because I am like Bob Ross with this thing. Um, so anyways, here I'm just using the formula from the previous slide. I've got two magnesium plus one oxygen right here, right? Gives me two magnesium oxide. So here's an example of a problem. How many moles of magnesium are needed to react with 3.7 moles of oxygen? Okay. How many moles of magnesium are needed to react with 3.7 moles of oxygen? And if you notice, I've color coded some things and I've color coded some things because when I show you how to set these up, I don't want you to have any question about where they come from. So the first thing you need to do is you need to set up the ratio that's in the problem. And so the ratio that is in the problem is 3.7 moles of oxygen to X moles of magnesium, because that's what was in the problem. And if you need to write the problem and underline, do whatever you need to do, 3.7 moles of oxygen, how many moles of magnesium? So it's X moles of magnesium. OK, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it equal to the ratio that is in the equation. So on the other side of the equal sign, I need to set it equal to the reaction that's in the equation. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at oxygen and I'm looking at magnesium and they needs to be in the same order. OK, it needs to be in the same order. So the ratio that is represented in that equation right there. I don't know why that equal sign pops up, is one mole of oxygen is two moles of magnesium because that comes from the equation here. That comes from the equation, but you notice that there's no one up here. And that's because that one is understood, right? We don't write that one. I'm putting it up there for right now, but you need to know if you don't see a number, it's a one, right? So I set that equal. I've got moles of oxygen on top, moles of oxygen on top, moles of magnesium on the bottom, moles of magnesium on the bottom. So this part came from the question, and this part came from the balanced chemical equation. Okay. And so then from there, let me move myself, uno mas, uh, I need to solve for this. So what is the best way to solve for this? cross multiply and divide right so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply x times one and that gives me one x and then i'm going to set it equal to two times 3.7 right so x times one one x two times 3.7 and then when I solve that algebraically, I find out that the answer is X equals 7.4 moles of Mg. And you notice that I have to have that entire answer. And I'm telling you right now, when you have a test on this, I'm taking off points. If you put moles, wrong. If you put magnesium, wrong. If you just put 7.4, wrong. I have to see 
7.4 what moles of what magnesium because i don't know whether you're talking about magnesium oxygen what i don't know what you're talking about so make sure you get that straight all right let's move on to the second example uh, i think i can move me up a little bit yeah there we go how many moles of ammonia could we make from one mole of h2 and so what i want to do is pause right here and you write on a separate sheet of paper what the uh, ratio should look like from the problem. What the ratio should look like from the problem. And so you should have had one mole of H2 over X moles of NH3 equals three moles of H2 over two moles of H3, NH3. Okay, and so this came from the equation. How many moles of ammonia? X moles of ammonia. Can we make from one mole of H2? One mole of H2 equals three moles of H2. Three moles of H2 over two moles of NH3. Two moles of NH3. We cross multiply 3X. One times two. 3X equals two times one. And X comes out to be 0.67 moles of NH3 right because so we were asking for moles of ammonia the answer has to be in moles of ammonia you might say well i didn't know what ammonia was you don't have to know what ammonia was you should know that this is nitrogen you should know that this is hydrogen so if you know that's nitrogen and you know that's hydrogen then it should be obvious that this is ammonia okay all right so here's two examples i want you to try on your own and I'm going to put in spots here for you to um, answer each one of these. Okay, you know, I'm going to put a spot here for you to answer each one of these. And again, these should be arrows. I don't know why my arrows are not showing up, but it's making me slightly irritated. That should be an arrow. It shouldn't matter, but just in case you do need it. OK. And so if you get these wrong, if you get these wrong, um, I will provide you with the right answer. But if you don't understand it, it is going to be super important that you get up with me. We're going to have a test on just this, just this. And so if you understand it, you're going to do awesome. If you don't, not so much. OK.